Let me be sure all my little dials are moving. This tape is part of the Middle Tennessee Oral History Collection designated as MT 2000.046. This is Betty Rowland. Today is Tuesday, June 19th, 2001. I'm interviewing Olivia Woods at her home located at 2808 Elam Road, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. The tape of this interview, along with the transcription of the interview, will become part of the Middle Tennessee uh, the MTSU Oral History Collection and will be available to the public. Future researchers may include portions of this interview in their publications. Is that alright with you, Olivia? Bam. Good. Okay, I have some things for the record. I need your full name. Sina Olivia Murray Woods. Okay. And your date of birth? April 15, 1920. Tax day. <laughs> yes. And your place of birth? Rutherford County. Okay, I'm going to get this a little closer to you because it's picking me up much better than you. Okay, uh, your father's name? Uh, James Stephen Murray. Okay, and what was his occupation? He worked at what was a livery stable in Murfreesboro. What do you remember of that? Nothing. Nothing? Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, and your mother's name? Was Florence Espy Murray. Okay. And did she work outside the home? No, she took in laundry work. Mm-hmm. Okay. And... Well, she worked outside the home after we were teenagers. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. She worked for the WPA. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. What did she do? She cooked at McFadden School. Oh, okay. Uh, somewhere in our collections, we have some WPA records, and they have menus and things in them. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me what some of your favorite childhood memories are. Oh. Have you always you've always lived in Rutherford County? Yes, except during the time my husband was in service, mm -hmm. um, playing hide and seek, <laughs> <laughs> playing house. We would uh, there was a family who lived back of us. <clears throat> And we had to stay in our yard. They had to stay in their yard. And the fence, we would make a playhouse on our side, and they would make one on their side. We would play like that through the fence. <laughs> <laughs> so the fence was just a wall in the playhouse. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I called you. We talked about this. I called you and came today because you hold a place in the history of MTSU as the first African-American student in 1962. But I'm going to start by looking at at uh, earlier education experiences. Tell me about uh, your elementary school. Well, I went to Bradley for six years and then from, no, for five years because in the sixth grade we went over to Holloway. Mm -hmm. Holloway had six through twelve. Mm -hmm. And, um, or just the basic things. Uh, we had what was called Prima and first grade. Mm -hmm. And uh, some kids stayed in the Prima the whole year. But I went, I, well, I guess it was what you call kindergarten now. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I went to um, in the Prima until Christmas. And after Christmas, I was in first grade. Mm -hmm. And at the end of uh, first grade, I was, in, I was promoted to second grade, and then when I went to third grade, um, we had illness in our family. We had measles, mumps, and diphtheria, and we were not able to attend school for three and a half months. My goodness. So needless to say, I had to repeat that grade. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't bad. I didn't mind that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you always enjoy school? Yes, I've always <laughs> loved it. Um, now, Bradley School was the, was the only school for African-American um, children yes, at that time? Yes, that's true. How did you get to school? Did you? I walked. You did? Mm -hmm. How far was that? You know where Oakland Mansion is? Mm -hmm. Okay, one block up from Oakland Mansion is Evergreen Street. Well, there is a street between Manny and Howland that's called Lee Street. Mm -hmm. And we lived halfway the block between Robert Street and Evergreen Street mm -hmm. on Lee. 
and we walked. Well, tell me about the school itself, what you remember of the school. I know they've restored it. I'm not sure. Yes, they have restored it, but at that time, well, let me see what I can remember. Oh, downstairs, there was, we don't call them rooms, we call the teachers, you know, Miss mm -hmm. Sadie. Okay. Uh, Miss Woodson, Miss Bertha, Miss Sadie, Miss Woodson, Miss Bertha, and I can't, and Mrs. Patterson. That was downstairs. And Miss Bertha finally went upstairs. <laughs> and upstairs, that was Miss Linville, that was fourth grade. Miss Bertha was fifth grade. And I cannot remember the other two. <laughs> now, Myrtle Lord was teaching there at that time? Uh, she came to teach there before I left. Oh, okay. But not when I first started. She was teaching out in the rural somewhere. Okay. But she came there to teach before I left. And um, her room was downstairs. What was the day like at school then? Mm -hmm. What was the day like at school? Okay. You started. We always had devotion. Always. Mm -hmm. And I even had devotion when I started teaching. We did it until... What's this lady's name that got it out of the schools? Yeah. And we would do our devotion. And then the next thing we would have would be, some teachers would have math and some would have reading. And you integrated your uh, language arts. You know, we would have this time for reading, this time for spelling, this time for English, uh, maybe your math. Somewhere in between, after, and then sometimes after lunch we'd have math, geography, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I get, I think that was about it. That was about all we had time for. Did you have chapel programs? Oh yes. Tell me about those. <laughs> we would have chapel, and that was fun <clears throat> because chapel was upstairs, and uh, we were downstairs, and we would do this little. Um, the big girls, you'd watch the big girls, they'd get, uh, they'd come, I don't know where they, they came from the hall, and I was down in the grades for a second, third. the big girls, when they would come in and they turned to go up those steps, they would do what they call cut the corners. <laughs> so what's that? And they would just kind of make them, they'd get up to uh, go, and they, I can't do it on top of the make some kind of oh, it's little, like a little dance step. yes <laughs> <laughs> and we always wanted to do that but we came out of the room and marched straight up the stage <laughs> and i said well when i go to the hall i'm gonna cut the corners when i cut <laughs> but i never got to the hall because it made holloway before then mm -hmm. <laughs> so what were chapel programs like um of course, Mr. Green was our principal, and he always spoke about something. I don't know what he mm -hmm. spoke about. It's been so long. And we would sing religious songs. Somebody would pray, and then sometimes we'd have a program. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't remember how often we had those programs, but uh, the students would put on the programs. Mm -hmm. And then we'd, be, we'd break the lunch. Mm -hmm. Did you carry your lunch or was there a lunch program? There was a lunch. Sometimes we carry it mm -hmm. and sometimes they, how they did all that in that little school is beyond me. But <clears throat> when you come in the front door, <clears throat> on the right, the second room on the right was the lunch room. Mm -hmm. And we could go in there and get a bowl of beans or <clears throat> a sandwich mm -hmm. or something on that order. Mm -hmm. Did you have field trips the way they do now? No. It's a relatively new thing. I mean, now kids go on field trips that go out of state. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's true. But no, we didn't have field trips. So from Bradley, you moved on to Holloway. To Holloway. Mm -hmm. I was there until I graduated high school. 
Okay. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Six years. Were there any teachers? Uh, now you went into teaching. You chose teaching for your own career. Are there any teachers that influenced that decision? Back in the fourth grade, Miss uh, Lily Bell Whitaker. I thought she was just great, and I always wanted to be like Miss Lily Bell <laughs> and teach like Miss Lily Bell. <laughs> and my first grade teacher, Miss Sadie. She was very influential. What too. was her full name? Sadie Williams Jones. Okay. And she had a sister who taught taught me seventh and eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And that was Miss Elma Jones. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, Elma Williams. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. What was graduation like at Holloway's? Well, we graduated from eighth grade. Oh. And then we graduated from Holloway. Mm -hmm. So you had graduation. Were you at, you were only at Bradley for six years? Mm -hmm. So you had two graduations mm -hmm. at Holloway. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, okay. And um, I have an eighth grade graduation picture. If you want to see it? Sure. I'll just since you can't find the picture, I'll just let you tell me about eighth grade graduation. <laughs> well, we wore long white dresses, organdy. <laughs> And white shoes. You look like brides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish I could find that picture. And um, we would go, we'd march into the chapel, because at Holloway we had a chapel. Uh, just right and now, after, in later years, they made it a library, but at that particular time, <clears throat> we would go into the chapel. And uh, We'd sit on the stage. It was so few of us. Mm -hmm. We could sit on the stage. How many people were in your eighth grade class, roughly? Um, about 15 or 16, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, then somebody would talk to us, mm -hmm. make a speech, you know. Mm -hmm. And needless to say, I don't remember <laughs> <laughs> what it was about or anything of the kind. And then we would sing, and then we had a uh, we had a valedictorian of eighth grade, and a salutatorian too. Mm -hmm. And we do that, and then we march out, and we were ready for high school. <laughs> Let me ask you: at that time, did some did some of the children just quit with eighth grade, or mm -hmm. did they all go on to high school? Well, everybody in my class went on to high school, but mm -hmm. they would drop, some of them dropped out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> some, um, but a lot of kids, after they finished eighth grade, would, did not go back. But There wasn't a mandatory uh, no. attendance requirement? Uh uh. Mm -hmm. You went if you wanted to. If you didn't want to, you just quit. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your high school graduation. Now, I've got a picture of that. I know where that is. <laughs> what year did you graduate from high school? 1939. 1939. So you were in high school during the Depression. Oh, my. Yeah, but needless to say, we thought everybody was poor. <laughs> well, what do you remember about the Depression? You know, everyone that I've asked about the Depression tells me that they didn't realize... I didn't know that was a Depression. I had no idea what Depression meant. Fifteen in your high school class, uh -huh. it looks like. Yep. And she came from the country. She was not in my eighth grade graduation. But this one... And me and this one, and Virginia, that one, this one, this one, this one, these two, and these two. My goodness. <laughs> That's lovely. Uh, tell me, the girls all seem to be dressed alike with the white we collars. All, we, we all had on dark 
dresses and wore the same collar for, for the pictures. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did the photographer come to the school? No, we went to the shop. It was on Main Street, uh, Mr. Todd. Uh-huh. Oh, my. So tell me what you do remember about the Depression. As I said, I didn't know there was a Depression. <laughs> it didn't affect your day-to-day -day life? No. My father died when I was six. Mm -hmm. And um, my brother worked at a grocery store, and um, it, he helped my mother to rear us because we were, there were three girls. Mm -hmm. and my older sister is a couple of years older than me, and my younger sister is three years, three and a half years younger than me. <coughs> and um, we didn't see a change in the way we lived. Mm -hmm. So, as I said, I, we didn't know it was a depression, mm -hmm. uh, my sisters and I. Of course, my mother and my brother knew, but uh, they tried to shield us as much as they could. Mm -hmm. And we thought that everybody just had to have plenty to eat and something to wear, and a warm place to, you know, mm -hmm. to stay. Well, now, you had made the decision to become a teacher, so you knew you were going to... Did you have to go on to school to teach at that time? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, see, I got married. <laughs> in, after high, high school? school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I finished in 1939, mm -hmm. and I got married in 1940. So, the school and teaching was not the uppermost thing in my mind. <laughs> Well, the United States is getting ready to enter war at that time, too. Do you remember the maneuvers that were going on oh, in Rutherford yes. County? Oh, yes. What do you remember of those? Uh, we could hear them coming through. Tanks? Mm-hmm. Uh, we, uh, we lived on Sevier Street. Uh, my husband and I lived with his Oh, let me parents. get your husband's name. Call you. Okay, okay. Robert Woods okay. Sr. Okay. So, Kaya and I... Um, we lived, as I said, we lived with his parents, and <clears throat> we would hear the tanks, and we'd get up and get dressed, everybody would, and go down on the corner of Manny and Sevilla and watch the tanks going through. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Kaya's mother loved to cook, and she'd feed anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, I have been sitting on the porch, we've been sitting on the porch, and Kaya's brother, Herschel, knew everybody. He was very outgoing. He was not married. And he would meet the soldiers and bring them home to eat. Oh, my. <laughs> and Mother would always fix for them. Hmm. I've heard other people talk about mm -hmm. taking soldiers into their homes during and the And then she um, took couples in. and. We didn't have an extra bedroom, but she let the couch out in the living room mm -hmm. and let them sleep there. And then after my husband went in service and I went to live with him, she would let them use our bedroom. Mm -hmm. And when he went overseas and I came, he wasn't, the war was just about over when he had to go. He didn't get any further than um, Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness. <laughs> um, when I got home, there was a young lady and her husband, who was a sergeant, living in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> she did take in strays, yes. didn't she? Yeah. Do you remember, uh, well, before, we, I, I want to stay with the war, but first let me ask you about the African-American business community that you remember in Murfreesboro at that time. Let's see, that was... Mr. Scales Undertaker, mm -hmm. uh, and a cafe, Miss Kibble's Cafe, mm -hmm. and then up on what, I never went over there, that was too far away, up, over on what they call Depot Hill was another cafe. Where was Depot Hill? <laughs> it was over on, they called it Depot Hill, it was on... Castle over in Westview, like. Okay. 
was on Castle and something, I don't know. Okay. But we called it Depot Hill. Okay. Just like the area of town where I grew up in was called Third War. And called the, what? Third War. Okay. <laughs> and the area of town that my husband grew up in, where we, after I got married and I moved out there, was called Sixth War. Oh, okay. <laughs> As long as you knew where you lived. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember uh, what, where you were, what you were doing when you heard of Pearl Harbor? Uh, the bombing of Pearl Harbor? We were putting dinner on the table. We had been to church. And uh, my mother-in-law and I were putting dinner on the table. When we heard it, I said, no, I, I don't believe this. I can't believe this. So, of course, we were frightened that <coughs> Kaya and um, his brother would have to go, and they did. Not right away, but, because that was in 1941, mm -hmm. and they went in 43. He went in August of 43, and his brother went in September of 43. And they both went into the Navy. But I shall never forget that Sunday. <laughs> What impact do you think the war had on on that generation, on women in particular? Uh, I, you know, I think it gave them a little more freedom. They were able to travel to go places with their husbands, wherever their husbands, some of them, not everybody, but uh, if their husbands were, sta were stationed someplace, of course they went. I did. Where did you go? He was in Virginia, mm -hmm. and I went to Virginia. First, he was in at, in school at Hampton. They had some kind of naval school there, and I went there. Then he was transferred from there over to uh, Little Creek, but I still stayed in Hampton at the same place mm -hmm. because he would catch the ferry and come back over. And I stayed there a couple of years, and... Um, then when he when they sent him started him overseas in July of forty five I came home mm -hmm. and he came home in December of forty five because the war was over mm -hmm. in August. Mm -hmm. Now we were there VE Day we were in Virginia and such a celebration <laughs> and then. Um, VJ Day was in August, mm -hmm. and that was a celebration in Murfreesboro. I really? Mm -hmm. What did they do? Oh, everybody uh, got in cars, any cars that they could, and went downtown blowing and, and paraded around the square, and horns were blowing, and people were screaming, mm -hmm. the war's over, the war's over. And where we lived, on Lee Street, there was a flat beside us, and um, the people who lived, the uh, neighborhood was integrated. Oh, really? Uh -huh. At that time? At that time. And the people who lived in the flat were very good friends of ours, and uh, we always kept in touch, and I remember one girl was her family lived there, and she married the boy that lived in the last flat. And I remember <laughs> her, so I said, oh, I am so glad Kaya will be coming home. I will be so glad to see him. And she said, uh, well, I don't know whether I'm going to be glad to see Rap or not because of what he's going to do to her. I said, why? You know, it's where she was living. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but anyway, at it was... Was that a white mm -hmm. lady? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she didn't know that he would he would be okay with that. Uh, he wasn't okay with. It. Really. <laughs> but yeah. you know, I think the war opened a lot of eyes in that way, also. Don't you think? Yes. But I I couldn't understand that. I I couldn't understand why she'd be interested in seeing somebody knowing her husband was facing death at any time. You know. But he came back. But they never did. They separated, I guess, in about a couple of 
months. Mm. Mm. Well, now, at some point, you had to make a decision to go to, you were at Tennessee State first, right? Oh. Uh, at, but now it was, a, was it a and at that time? Mm -hmm. So how did all these decisions come about? Well, now, your husband, did he have the GI Bill? Yes, he did. So did, you just tell me how it all fits together. Well, uh, when he came back, <coughs> he went to school down there. At a and the, uh -huh. he, had, he was teaching when he was drafted. Oh, okay. And, um, but he took advantage of the GI Bill and worked on, well, he just went to school. He didn't have a job when he came back. Mm -hmm. So he went to school. Mm -hmm. And then um, after he came, let's see, what happened? Can uh get back to this? Okay. You're going to tell me how you wound up going to TSU? Yes. Uh, now, your husband was there in school. No, not then. He was teaching then. Okay. So he suggested that, uh, he said, don't you want to go to school? Well, I had not been. I married right out of high school. <clears throat> I said, no, not really. I'd rather take care of my baby because George was about 18 months old. <clears throat> he said, well, Mom will take care of him. I think he had talked it over with his family. Mm -hmm. And she said, yes, I will. I'll take care of the baby. So I said, Okay, so I ended uh, I ended com commuting uh, from Murfreesboro. From Murfreesboro. Because now, still at that time, to go to MTSC was not an option for you. No, that was in '48. Okay. So I went a couple of years. No, I went one year and one quarter, and that's when I got pregnant. And I was so sick, and I said. This is for the bird, so I quit. Mm -hmm. And then I had decided, and that's that's my diploma, the middle one. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh about that a lot and said uh, <laughs> that was my BS degree. <laughs> well, and she's she's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> she, um, and then um, I decided I would go back and finish, and because I my major was elementary education. And, um, but then, uh, I got pregnant with that one. <laughs> one more. <laughs> and my sisters teased me and said, just, just don't think about going back to school. <laughs> <laughs> you know where babies come from. They come from college, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, when he started to school, I went back to, that's when we decided that I would go to MTSC. <laughs> now, for you to be the, did you realize you were going to be the first African American student there? Yeah. I said, nobody's out there. I don't think anybody is out there. And the girl across, who lived across the street from me was very frightened for me to go. But I was not afraid. You weren't? Uh-uh. I was not afraid. I guess my faith kept me from being afraid. It never occurred to me that somebody would bother me. Mm -hmm. But You just didn't want to drive to Nashville. I, I mean, it, it wasn't I like you I had three kids then, mm -hmm. and I could not take care of my house and commute to Nashville. And you had the opportunity, I mean, it, it was open for you to go yeah. to MTSC. Mm -hmm. Because the law had been passed. Mm -hmm. And so we decided that I would go. It wasn't a matter of testing or anything of the kind. And when I got there, I saw, I saw another black person, but he was from the from the base taking a special class. Okay. Um, and I'd pass him on the stairs. He'd smile, and I'd smile, you know. Mm -hmm. At least somebody else is here. But he was not a student. It was a workshop or something mm -hmm. that he was doing for a couple of weeks. Because after that, I didn't see him anymore. But I made some very good friends there. That, uh, but the first thing that happened, the day that a uh, registration, you know, when you register, uh, all new students, transfer students, had to go to the Todd Library. 
and Dr. Cope was president at the time, and um, I went over because I was much older than the students there, mm -hmm. and uh, so many of them had passed and spoken, and I had spoken to them. And when we got inside and sat down, some young man came in and said, he looked at me and said, oh, it's dark in here. So Dr. Pope went right on with what he was saying to the students. And when he had finished, he asked that young man to remain. So I never had anything like that happen again. But another thing that happened, <clears throat> we went to chapel, they would have chapel, I guess that's what you call mm -hmm. occasionally, not all the time, and uh, but they didn't call it chapel, I can't remember what they called it, but anyway, um, everybody got up and sung Dick Saturday too, I like the tune, <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> it was catchy, <laughs> I like it, it didn't bother you at all, it, no, that did not bother me, you know that becomes a controversy later on, in the late 60s uh -huh, and early uh -huh. 70s, but you were just singing Dixie right along with them. Right along with them. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. When did you tell me before we started the tape about Dr. Sam Ingram and his help with your registration? Mm -hmm. Tell me that story on tape. Oh, when we got there. We being? My husband and, my, and myself. He went with you to register. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, because I probably would not have gone <laughs> if he had not gone with me. Um, Where was he teaching at that time? Uh, let's see. Christiana. So your husband was teaching in the county school yes. system? Uh -huh. okay. in, in the county. Uh, the school that your, te your husband was teaching at, at Christiana, was it still a segregated school? Oh, yes. At that, so mm -hmm. the county schools were still segregated oh, yes. at that time? And the city schools were, too. Okay. So he goes with you to register. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Ingram saw us coming up to Old Main. <clears throat> and he came out and met us and asked us if we were going to register. And uh, my husband and I both said, yes, I was going to. I <laughs> he <register."> were. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, okay, come on, I'll show you where to go and what to do. But as I said, after we got over there, he ended up pulling all my cards for me. <laughs> Now that's in the JUB. You registered in the JUB? Yeah. James Union Building? James Union Building. Uh huh. Uh, that's where we registered. Now you registered when? Uh, the fall of 62. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you were the only African American student? Full time student. Th that uh, semester? Mm hmm. And the next semester, two other young ladies came. Um, Margaret Carney and Linda Green. She's Dr. Linda Kennedy now, mm -hmm. and she teaches in the county. And Margaret got married, and she lives in out of state. I don't know where Margaret lives. Usually when she comes home, she'll call me. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, that semester, the first semester I was there by myself. The second semester, they were there, and I would run into them every now and then because we did not have the same classes. But um, in the next year, several people came. Fall of 63. Mm -hmm. But it was all young ladies at first. At first. And I don't remember when Mr. Vaughn came. Uh, Wilbert Vaughn. I have came. his name in here somewhere. He was, he was the band teacher at Bradley and Holloway. But he came as a graduate student. Yes, he came as a graduate student. Okay. That is, he was the first black graduate student. You know, I went and looked through some of the sidelines, you know, the college mm -hmm. newspaper, and I didn't see any articles at all about your arrival on campus. Uh, that were not. Did you cause a stir or big mm -hmm. news, or mm -hmm. how did it happen? Um, well, when classes opened, I just went to classes. Nobody paid me any attention. I didn't pay anybody any attention. Occasionally, some of the students might do this. What? Oh. You know, in passing. But. Uh, pull, their, pull their skirt. Uh, they, they won't be able to see that on the tape. Just. <laughs> no, that's true. That, in passing, some uh -huh. might 
kind of shun me, you know. Oh, okay. But that didn't matter because I was there to get an education, to get a job, so we could educate my children. Do you think it was helpful that you were an older student? Yes, I do. Because I was not interested in the social side of what was going on. I did join the student NEA. But other than that, when my classes were over, I was anxious to get home because I had fixed dinner and see that Kaya Jr. had got his lesson. I never had to worry about Deborah getting her. Mm -hmm. And I, the only thing I'd say, George, have you done your homework? Yeah, Mama. If he hadn't, his dad, it was there. <laughs> Well, the fact that you didn't live on campus and the fact that you weren't there for the social aspect of it put a different light on your... Yes, I think it did. Your whole experience, didn't mm -hmm. it? Now, my, uh, now, I graduated in 65 and George went, but there were quite a few black students there then. Oh, he went when? In 65? In the fall of 65. Oh, so when you graduated, he was ready to go to I college? I graduated in the spring of 65. Uh-huh. And he gra he uh, entered Middle Tennessee the fall of 65. What was his experience like? He would have been there during that time that uh, yes, he perhaps was he wasn't excited about singing Dixie. <laughs> uh, he, well, bless his heart, he was just as naive as his mother. <laughs> Because he, I remember him telling me one incident, the, he was in the band, mm -hmm. and um, they went to Washington, D.C., and somebody said something about jungle bunnies, and he got up to look to see. <laughs> he didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> he would have been a candidate to take cow tipping, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. And he laughs about it. Well, that's, that's sweet. Um, did you feel a need to prove yourself? No. All I needed to do was to get an education, get out of there, and get a job. Mm -hmm. That was my goal. Did you feel like that you were treated fairly by other students and, and by uh, professors? Did you... Um, the professors, most of them, mm -hmm. some of them, as I said, uh, I didn't feel that I was, I kind of felt the cold shoulder, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But most of them were extremely nice. What professors stand out in your memory? I think you mentioned Bob Womack earlier. And Dr. Berry. And, uh, is that Mary Tom Berry? Yes. Let me pick this up so you can get to the yearbook. Okay. You can cut that off tonight. You're going to tell me about Martha Hampton. <laughs> I'm going to turn the tape back on while you tell me about Martha okay. Hampton. Uh, she was dean of women. And my husband would pick me up from uh, gym class. That was my last class. That was during the summer um, when he was out of school. He would pick me up. And I would come out of the gym in my shorts and get in the car. And I didn't know that was a no-no. <laughs> and uh, uh, Louise Wilson, she's Louise Cooper now, and we have remained friends all these years. But Louise said, Libby, you can't do that. I said, well, I, I'm getting in the car, I'm going home. I wear them downtown, you know. She said, if Miss Hampton catch you, she said, it'll be terrible. I said, really? And, of course, I appreciated her telling me that, and I didn't wear them anymore. I, well, I put on a skirt when I came out of the gym. Every person that I have interviewed that has mentioned Martha Hampton has talked about that short issue, the <laughs> issue of wearing shorts. <laughs> well, I had no idea that that's what, you know... I'm going to put this on pop. Who's my, that? Huh? Who's that? Dr. Harold Spraker was what? my math teacher. Oh, okay. He make an impression on you? He's my neighbor. Oh. <laughs> he wasn't then. But, um, yes, he was very... Dr. Spraker was very good. And he would... Um, he was very nice. I could go to him and ask him 
about different things that I did not understand. Because, see, I had been out of school a long time. And he would take time and explain it to me. So Dr. Sprinkle was fine. Friend of mine. Okay, we're going to talk about your history teachers. Okay. Um, I grew up with Dr. Hooper. And when he came back... What's his first name? Ernest. Ernest Hooper. Mm -hmm. Okay. But my, as I told you one, uh, earlier that my brother worked at a grocery store, his brother worked there too. So um, my brother drove a horse and wagon to deliver groceries. And Ernest would ride, well that's Dr. Hooper, mm -hmm. would ride with him and they, he would come out to the house and he had a pony. And he would ride the pony over there and he would let us ride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But in a, at any rate, uh, I saw him on campus, and he was sent as a liaison for the black students. I didn't know that. He didn't tell me that. He just would always ask me if I was doing all right, if I was having any problems. And mm -hmm. I wasn't having any problems, so I said no. Then Dr. Wyndham mm -hmm. was, uh, I don't remember what history, but he, I had him for history. And... Um, his wife invited us out to her house to tea. That was Margaret, Linda, and myself. Really? Mm -hmm. So we went over there to tea. And let's see. Oh. He was the head of, uh, he was the school director. Dr. Bowden? Dr. Bowden, uh -huh. What do you remember about him? Huh? What do you remember of him? I just remember how kind he was, you know, he'd make it his business to speak each time he saw me. And then Dr. Mary Tom Berry. What did she teach? Language arts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Griever, he taught, uh, I can't remember what he taught, but he taught one of the block courses. I had him. And, and is Dr. Womack? I had him for one of the block courses. Mm -hmm. You know he's still teaching there. He was, I thought he retired. <laughs> no, he's still teaching. Oh, my. I didn't like him at all. He literally walked over me in a class one day. Just walked over my feet. <laughs> I didn't like him at all. Needless to say... <laughs> Dr. Dillis Smotherman. Don't care for him, huh? No. <laughs> Mr. Parker. Hillary Parker. He was at the campus school. Mm -hmm. And we had to do a lot of classes over there. We uh, were assigned over there to teach different classes. Or to observe. And he was very kind. Did yeah. you have to do student teaching? Yes. I did it in Bradley on Mercury. So you had to do, you had to do your student teaching in a segregated school, mm -hmm. or did you ask for Bradley? No, that's where you were assigned. Uh, no, I didn't ask for Bradley. I didn't know where I was going, uh -huh. and um, they told me <laughs> I was going to Bradley. And uh, got that off. I need to. Did you find someone else? Let's see. Miss Beulia Davis. I did not have any classes under her, <coughs> but I remembered her from. I had classes under Joe Black Hayes. Uh huh. And um, we did first. Let's see, first aid. And um, we had partners to practice your mouth to mouth. Uh huh. And. Um, he made sure that um, I would know I was not supposed to. I, I uh, put my mouth on the person's mouth. I said, I wouldn't do that anyway. <laughs> well, you know, it was new for everyone, wasn't mm -hmm. it? I said, no, I, I wouldn't be interested in doing that anyway. I said, that doesn't make sense to me. How did you know Miss Davis? She was in the um, uh, fiscal ed. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. 
and we'd pass, and she'd speak and I'd speak. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any classes under her. But of course, since then, we both belonged to uh, AAUW. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Howard <laughs> and Dr. Bills. Where is Dr. Bills? I had a class on Raymond that. Bills. Yes, Ray Bills. Yes, yes. He's still there. Well, I had Music 101 under him. No, one of them. I had Music 101 and Music 102. I had, yes, no, I didn't. 101. I had it, I flunked it under Dr. Bills. <laughs> you had it what? I flunked it. You music flunked it? 101 <laughs> under Dr. Bills, and I repeated it with uh, Dr. Howard. But uh, he was great. He was a good teacher. I, Dr. Bills? Uh huh. I did not know where Middle C was on the piano. Oh. I knew nothing about music. Okay, so you were coming in with no background. No background whatsoever, except the Glee Club, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so, I mean, uh, he was fair. It wasn't that he flunked me because I was black. He did not do that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about <laughs> He flunked music. you because you deserved it. Right? <laughs> I deserved it. <laughs> But, uh, and then after <clears throat> my daughter's music teacher, uh, she was, she went, she, she took a job. Mm -hmm. So I had to have a music teacher for her. So I got Dr. Bills. Mm -hmm. And uh, when she graduated high school, he told her, he says, she's good. I want her to continue her music. She wouldn't. He said, I will find you a music teacher at Vanderbilt. She went to Vanderbilt. He said, I will find you a music teacher at Vanderbilt. She said, that's all right. I'm going to have to concentrate on <laughs> But she played the flute in the band, mm -hmm. uh, in Vanderbilt Peabody Band. Mm -hmm. But she wouldn't take any more piano. Mm -hmm. So I had a chance to give it back to her with her children. <laughs> oh, that's that's the uh, nice part about mm -hmm. seeing your kids have kids, isn't it? You get a chance to give it back. Because she, uh, her little girl, started piano when she was second grade. And then she had kind of gotten overloaded and she told her she could, she had so many out extracurricular activities that she was doing that she could drop too. She said, okay, Mommy, I will drop uh, music and Sunday school. She said, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia, you saw a lot of changes at MTSU. You went, um, you started in 62 as the first African-American student, and then you went back and uh, you earned your master's in 74. Uh -huh. And, of course, you said your son started in 65, 65. so you saw it through those years that may have been a little more turbulent, I think, by uh, looking in the sidelines. Mm -hmm. There was more controversial. Uh, turbulent, but it, it's just an awareness. So what kind of changes did you see between the time you entered in 62 and when you were wor back working for your master's? Um, well, at the time I went back for my master's, of course, I went. I had night classes mm -hmm. and in sessions and... Uh, uh, blacks were more readily accepted mm -hmm. at that time, and but most of the people who were going nights and at it, and and doing intersection, they were like me. They were more interested in getting that degree to uh, help them, you know, further education mm -hmm. and increase their pay mm -hmm. than they were in trying to prove something. Did you have a support, did you feel that you had a support system on campus at all in your undergraduate years? Well, I had to, I made some pretty good friends out there. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> some of them I've talked with since then. Since then, there was a young lady, uh, Martha Worley. Now, I don't 
I don't remember what her name was as an undergraduate student. Martha and the girl who's principal at Bradley, uh, Craig. What's her name? I don't know her. Can't think of her name. Louise Cooper. Penny. Her name not Penny. Sharon Moffitt. Her husband runs the uh, uh, runs the uh, <laughs> uh, Ryan's flower shop. Oh, okay. So we became friends then, and we have remained friends. Mm -hmm. Now, Lynn, Lynn, she was Lynn Craig. She's Lynn something else now, but she's principal at Bradley. And she smoked, and I smoked at that time. Mm -hmm. And we would... Uh, now, was she white? Yeah. All of them were white. Okay. <laughs> well, you had smoking in common. <laughs> <laughs> and we had some classes together. Uh -huh. And a lot of times we would study, we'd go to the library mm -hmm. and study together. And Penny and I had um, speech together uh, with all of Penny, Sharon Moffitt. Mm -hmm. Sharon was from Indiana. Uh, Martha was from New York. Lynn lived in Murfreesboro, but her family came from someplace else. And Louise uh, Wilson, she's Louise Cooper, she lived at Walt Hill. Mm -hmm. But we all became, I, I, well, I was friend to each one of them. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Lynn had another friend, I can't think of her name now. But she left Murfreesboro. She's back in Murfreesboro now. Uh, Lynn told me she was back. But at any rate, um, we were always uh, together during time that I was not in class. Mm -hmm. We would study together. So I guess I did have a support group. You developed your own personal support group? Yeah. Um, now, when your son was there, <coughs> did he find more established support groups. By well, then they were moving in that direction. There were they? quite a few blacks there then. Mm -hmm. So his support groups group were, were the black students. Mm -hmm. They and started a black student association yes, during that he time. Yes, he was in on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, he didn't really tell us too much. He was afraid maybe mama would get mad. <laughs> But he didn't really tell us too much about what was going on. But uh, he was in I, the um, ROTC. Mm -hmm. And they talked about he was supposed to go somewhere with him, and I didn't want him to go. And somebody told him what had happened to the last black student that went with him. Uh, so he didn't go. But, you know, a lot of the things that you read about that were rocking the South during that time, those were avoided here in Murfreesboro. A lot of the problems and, and turmoil, it was... It was, we didn't have it. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, people got used to seeing me on campus mm -hmm. and said, well, and then Margaret and um, Linda, then they thought, well, no. They're not going to be bad. <laughs> then I saw some other folk on campus, and I remember one person I saw on campus. I went over to talk to him, this young black person. His mother and I were friends. And uh, I asked him, I said, anything I can help you find? No, no, I'm finding everything I need to find. I said, find. <laughs> a bit of a chip on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, it really is. It depends upon the people that are involved in the situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hmm. Well, tell me, uh, now, when you graduated in 65, where did you find your first teaching job? Uh, well, that summer, when I graduated, I worked for Head Start at Smyrna. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the principal the name is Staffenport. But I did not want to drive to Smyrna. We didn't have but one car. Mm -hmm. And I was hoping I could get a job in Murfreesboro. And I had worked for um, 
John Holloway, have you ever heard of him? Mm -mm. Well, he used to be mayor of the town, and I used to go and clean up uh, he and Dean during the time uh, that was his wife, that I was going to MTSU, I mean to um, TSU because on Tuesdays and Thursdays I had a late class. So I would go early in the morning and clean up because she taught, and then I'd catch the bus and go on to and we became good friends, and she would come out to visit us, and uh, we, Kai and I would go over and visit them. Mm -hmm. uh, even though, you know, you, they were white, we were black, we were still mm -hmm. friends. <laughs> so um, John was very instrumental in my getting a job at mm -hmm. Bradley. So your first teaching position was at Bradley. Uh -huh. Now I used to substitute before I went back to school. Mm -hmm. I'd substitute in the black mm -hmm. schools all over Rutherford County and in Murfreesboro City. So um, Ms. Tallway figured, well, in as much as you've substituted in the city, and Mr. Hubgood did too, he was superintendent. He said, well, you substituted in the city and we need a teacher. I don't see why we can't hire you. So I got the job. At Bradley? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, when did the city schools desegregate? Well, I taught at Bradley one year. We had one white teacher there. I can't remember her name. Uh, but it was still an all-black school? It was still an all-black school. Okay. And the next year, they integrated the teachers. Then they, I went to, the next year, I went to Critchlow, and I taught at Critchlow two years, and it was thoroughly integrated when I got there. In 66? Hmm. In 66? Uh -huh. Or 67? Let's see, 66, 67. Okay. That was the first school year that I was at Critchlow. I was there 66, 67, 67, 68. Mm -hmm. So it was thoroughly integrated, and uh, but I was the only black teacher. Now, what was that and process like? Well, was it difficult for you? N no, not really, because I guess I'm kind of a loner. <laughs> <laughs> you just had a job to do, didn't you? That's right, and I loved the children, black or white, didn't matter. And, um, but I can remember, Mr. Underwood was a very nice person who was the principal. I can remember a faculty meeting. Um, we were all in the library waiting for Mr. for the meeting to begin. So here come one of the teachers. She was late as usual because she wanted everybody to think she was so important that well, that's neither here nor there. But mm -hmm. at any rate, um, she came in and uh, she started talking. And she said, um, if I had that little nigger girl's mama, what she would do to her? And you were there? Uh-huh. And you were the only black teacher? Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. I looked, I looked at you know, and, and I wanted, well, I looked at <laughs> <laughs> But I said, no, it's no need of me being ignorant. So I didn't say anything. And when uh, the meeting was over, most of the teachers came to me and apologized for her. But Mr. Underwood had her to stay. So she came later and apologized. So. How long did you teach at Critchlow? Two years. And then they made it a middle school. Mm -hmm. And I went to uh, Mitchellism Primary and stayed there for 16 years until I retired. Mm -hmm. You saw a lot of changes in education during that time? Yes, yes. Then we went from um, a self-contained classroom <coughs> to teen teaching and then back to the self-contained classroom. <laughs> but. Um, I made some very good friends at Mitchell Hills from Primary, and we still keep in touch. Now, Jean Jennings was my mainstay. She and Trish Ayers. Trish was doing her student teaching, 
Trish was at one time married to Donnie Ayers, mm -hmm. but they aren't married anymore. And uh, but Jean and I, we teamed up to do teen teaching one year, and then Trish and I did teen teaching one year. And uh, I made some very good friends at Mitchell Nielsen Primary. Mrs. Snowden was our principal, and um, but it was strange. Everybody was afraid of the NAACP. And I told them, I said, if you do not mistreat the children, then you don't have anything to worry about as far as the NAACP is concerned. I said, as long as you're nice to the kids. And I only really knew of one incident where the teacher said there were two kids fighting, a black one and a white. One happened to have been in my room. And he came in, and I said, uh, why are you in here? Why aren't you out at doing PE? And he said, he sent me in. I said, why? And he and this little, he and Scott had gotten in a fight. And, I, and he said, he told me to go to the office. I said, I tell you what, you stand here, let me go find out what it's all about. So I went out to find out what it was all about, and he said they were fighting. I said, well, where's Scott? And he's out there on the playground. I said, well, let me tell you something. If you are going to send Jeffrey, you're going to send Scott. You're not going to send one without the other one. So he left. He said, well, you weren't out there. I said, I know, but you said they, they were fighting. And I said, if they were fighting, they both need to go to the principal. He said, well, forget it. <laughs> so. <laughs> so your experiences, it sounds like, have always been pretty positive, And if they weren't, you, you made them positive. <laughs> I tried, at any rate. <laughs> That's a good attitude <laughs> for everyone. So, but I enjoyed all of my teaching years, everyone. I've enjoyed the people that I've met, friends I've made. But, um... Jean, I was telling you this one that <clears throat> we did team teaching together. And first, we were in room, a room beside each other, and we were in and out, <laughs> shared experiences and materials and everything. Jean died this summer. Hated to lose her because she was a good friend. Mm -hmm. But, and our children were friends. She had a daughter that was in same grade with Kaya and they were very good friends mm. and um, her daughter her daughter's boyfriend and Kaya were friends and that's how they got to be very close mm -hmm. well I am just so grateful that you were willing to sit down and talk today well I enjoyed it I mean it's an area of time that I told you the, the Gore Center has focused on to learn more about and I never thought I would have the opportunity <laughs>